hey guys so welcome back so here um, I'm going to show you how to create an application and um, I'm going to use the the console as the web interface to uh, to create our first application and uh, subsequently we're going to be using the RC command um, actually I just prefer the RC uh, command line tool uh, this is because um, you know as a developer um, you're mostly using your command line tool uh, for the most part and sometimes you feel I mean it's um, kind of breaks your productivity workflow by switching back and forth all the time so um, I mean for right from the comfort of the command line tool you can just initiate the RC tool communicate with your open origin now um, your open shift implementation uh, without actually having to switch to the uh, GUI but anyway so um, let's see how that's done in the GUI then we will use the RC command in the subsequent um, application creation all right so on my page here you can see that um, there's nothing I don't have an application so I will click the create your first application now so once this page loads, uh, the next page you can see here uh, will give me a listing of all the capabilities of my OpenShift installation. Here you can see I can create, um, you know, JBoss application server applications. Uh, basically, I can create the Tomcat six seven application types. Um, I can kind of uh, create instant applications here. Usually you can see like Drupal, um, Laravel four, WordPress. Uh, some of them are actually customized or custom. Um, custom implementations so you don't have this out of the box um, I already have a an, an installation of uh, PHP 5.4 uh, of course um, you have PHP 5.3 you have Python 2.6 uh, 2.7 and 3.3 uh, you have Django as a web framework uh, you have Ruby on Rails you have Ruby 1.8 1.9 uh, you have Node.js, Perl, and so on. So basically, you can see um, the power of OpenShift come out when you see some of these things. I mean, it's very easy to quickly just scaffold an application and um, kind of get right to work without having to think about the uh, the nitty gritty or configuration options you have to do in Apache, in PHP, and so on. Uh, OpenShift um, Origin takes care of that for you as a path system. All right, so um, our first application. Um, let's just pick a random. Let's just pick a PHP application. All right, so um, on the application uh, configuration page, you can see we're using PHP 5.4 cartridge. Now, um, if you're uh, wondering what a cartridge is, uh, well, a cartridge is uh, sort of like a like a building block for your application. So, for in this in this case right now, what we're saying is we want PHP 5. Uh, we want to have PHP 5.4 support in our you know in our environment so we just go ahead and pull a PHP 5.4 cartridge uh, basically hope uh, hopefully that makes sense uh, anyway so cartridge is analogous to you know kind of like your your installation of PHP for instance so that's cartridge of course you can have cartridges that are uh, complete uh, that are complex that will depend on other cartridges um, so you see that in a moment um, of course now this will be the public URL for your application um, so the format uh, anyway from OpenShift perspective is um, you have the application name um, appended or um, a hyphen then your namespace uh, this is the same uh, thing we, we saw earlier in the settings page for domains and then you have the application DNS um, domain uh, what you can also do is you can optionally provide a git URL to one of your you know applications and what OpenShift will do is it will download the contents of your git repo and make it the default um, content in your document room hopefully that made sense as well and then gears so gears are like the application containers right so i mean we're going to install php but i mean where are we actually installing the php at right so we are a user called openshift we need to have an environment where we can install php uh support so that environment in this case the container um which is referred to as a gear in openshift uh, basically so we have different um, you know different types of gears of course it depends on your administrator or your implementation in this case uh, in my implementation of OpenShift origin I have just two the small and the medium um, gears of course you can make this you know kind of um, flexible to the user to add gears to themselves and make it available and you know and all that all right so you can see now this is the main path where it's kind of um, indicating the cartridge so you can see cartridges here we're using the PHP 5.4 cartridge uh, please do not confuse this with the you know PHP 5.4 cartridge up here. This is basically telling you that this application is based on the PHP 5.4 cartridge, but actually uses the 
PHP 5.4 cartridge here. So of course it can use the PHP 5.4 cartridge. Uh, in addition, maybe use the MySQL cartridge and so on. So um, hopefully that made sense as well. Uh, the next one here is the scaling. So OpenShift Origin allows you to kind of provide an application scale, um, you know, kind of scaling at your application level. Uh, so you can see how convenient that will be. Uh, basically it creates, uses HA proxy to set up a proxy system and kind of load balance um, traffic across, you know, multiple gears. And remember gears are like your containers for your application. So a gear will contain your application code and you know, a whole lot of stuff you've added to your gear. And once you enable scaling, of course, and you know, kind of there was like there's traffic uh, spike that kind of exhausted or re has reached the maximum, um, you know, threshold for a cartridge. It's going to go ahead and create a new gear, copy the code to the new gear and set up a load balancer above that so that requests have been load balanced, um, you know, kind of that. So pretty much neat uh, in a way that it handles the, you know, kind of um, scalability or scaling. So uh, you will also note in upcoming videos that, uh, I mean, because you have scaling doesn't mean you can scale everything. So there are some things that are, cannot be scaled. For instance, you cannot scale a MySQL cartridge, for instance, or an application that has MySQL. So except you're willing to have a different gear for MySQL and then you have other um, gears kill with your web application and all all right so hopefully we've spent enough time just explaining what um this page looks like so without further ado let me just give our application a name i say this is going to be called php app all right so i'm going to click the create application now of course um my infrastructure is based on a vm so um what that means is performance is not paramount in this case i mean it's going to have a little performance um hit but anyway um for demonstration purposes and you know kind of um example sake i feel it's enough so this might take a while depending on the cartridge size and what it has to do so go ahead and fast forward this and once it's complete then we can continue from there okay so you can see the application has been created um you can see application has been created here and um it has actually given us some um kind of instructions on you know kind of what to do so here you can see we use git to manage the application um it has given us the git url um so we can copy this and of course you can do so many things here so you can see uh, that the rc tool is really very um you know kind of powerful so i'm going to continue to the application overview page and you can see that this page kind of uh, describes what's going on um, from the previous part this is the public url for the application so you can see this is uh, php app dash pass dot app dot ml dot local so um anyway so you can see that it's created under the pass domain and we're using the php 5.4 cartridge and you can see the status of the cartridge so in this case php 5.4 is started we're using the small gear and the small gear profile here has a storage capacity of uh, one gigabyte. So anyway, so what we can also do is you can see that we can add database support. We can add MySQL, PostgreSQL, and so on. And because OpenShift Origin, um, you know, it can, it's kind of smart enough to figure out that hey, you know, we already have a PHP cartridge, so this is supposed to be a web language. Uh, it might interest you to know that um, in your web language, you might need a database. So you know, kind of gives you the options here and you can ahead, you can go ahead and add uh, continuous integration in this case php uh, openshift supports jenkins so feel free to use that if that's what your environment needs and here you have the source code for the application and of course instructions on how to access it remotely so you're going to get your kind of your ssh url uh one more thing you can do here you can see uh so let's say you don't want this domain uh this i mean this looks weird but let's say you want to host your application on OpenShift Origin, but prefer to use your own custom domain name. Uh, OpenShift allows you to do that. So you can see here where we have this change. If you click on that, you can see that on this page, your application URL is set to this. And then of course, uh, when you purchase your domain name, uh, you can go ahead and set up a CNAME record, uh, sort of like an alias that points your domain name to the application name anyway. So, and you can also kind of, um, uh subscribe to uh you know sort of like an ssl certificate so you can obtain an ssl certificate let's say you don't want the self-signed certificate you see popping up in your application and that will go ahead and kind of set up your ssl environment 
all right so um hopefully that has made sense and you can go ahead and kind of view your application here so if i open up in a new tab you can see our brand new php application here uh, basically this is just a, a welcome page and because this uses git you can go ahead and use git to control that so let me just show you quickly before we end this video um so all right so in our open shift demo um I'm going to paste what I copied earlier. I'm going to press enter. So, well, um, well, this happens sometimes. Sometimes because maybe the DNS hasn't propagated properly, or sometimes because you know, um, I mean, it just happens once in a while, not all the time, anyway. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and try to ping the application URL. Now the reason why I'm leaving this in the video is so that you can see that uh, stuff like this can happen and just know that you can't panic. Um, it happens. Alright, so uh, I want us to troubleshoot this together as well. So could not read from the remote repository. Uh, okay, so We can ping, all right. So I can see here. Uh, let's try this one more time and ping that and try our clone in here. All right, so the cloning was successful. Um, so please, um, so for those of you using Windows, um, sometimes the DNS cache kind of gets in the way. Um, so you can see you can stop this. The DNS cache service temporarily. Uh, to go ahead and start it back up, but and anyway, once you disable that, it kind of flushes, forces you to clear the cache for the DNS. Anyway, so here you can see we have our PHP app uh, directory, and we can go ahead and make um, our changes here. So I'm going to open this in Notepad plus plus, and so let's say we want to, you know kind of use PHP and just uh, hello world okay so once we do that we made the changes we can go to our command line tool and use you know git as per usual so so we're just going to commit this say our initial uh, change and once you do that uh you just have to ju you just need to do git push and that's all so uh, what you will see now is the application re um, kind of restarting the php cartridge and uh kind of um up uploading the changes i've made uh is it uses git to do that and once it's done then it's go ahead and start the cartridge back up and uh then you're free to go i mean your application has been deployed and you know and that's it so uh, pretty much simple stuff anyway so um uh, we've spent quite some time on this video and this is because i wanted to show you everything you needed to know about creating applications and in the kind of subsequent screencast uh, we're going to be using much of the rc tools so we'll not be spending so much time um anyway because you already know some of these terminologies like gears like cartridges you know like the containers and all that so hopefully that made sense so just wait for our application to deploy and we're pretty much done and by the way if uh, you have any comments or any um suggestions or uh, as usual please drop it in the comment below uh we're going to go ahead and kind of like um look at the problem if you have any or the suggestions so that we can incorporate it into um, you know future videos all right so our our deployment is complete so if we refresh this page you can see that our changes has applied you can see uh, it has changed anyway so um guys i hope you enjoyed this and hope to catch you in the next one thanks a lot